One of the gaps that a bank is trying to manage with asset liability management is the earning gap. And the earning gap occurs because there's an asset liability mismatch. Specifically, there's a mismatch between the source of funds, the bank's liabilities, and the use of funds, which is the bank's assets. Okay, And so there could be a number of these different types of mismatches. You could have fixed versus floating, long-term versus short-term, or you could have both floating instruments, floating rate liabilities and floating rate assets, but they reset at different frequencies. So I'm going to go through each of these examples here. So let's start with fixed versus floating. That's a pretty easy one to understand. Let's say the bank has a single asset. They've got a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, and it's 5% interest that they are getting from those borrowers. And then in terms of liability, the source of the funds, the bank has funded those assets with a floating rate note that is a rate of 2%. Now it's floating rate, so that's going to adjust periodically. Okay, at the reset set date this is going to become a new interest rate now right now the bank has a net interest margin of three percent but let's say interest rates go up right so interest rates go up and so now this resets and it resets to let's say three percent okay so now the floating rate is not two percent it's three percent so now the bank's margin has shrunk okay it went from three percent to two percent okay so this is a risk right, that the interest rates will change, right, so when they have fixed assets that are funded by floating rate liabilities, there is a risk that if interest rates go up, the liabilities will become more expensive and it will shrink the bank's margin. Now, there's things the bank can do to address that, but this is the risk. This is what we're talking about with the earning gap and how the net interest income of the bank can be affected by this asset liability mismatch. We see here we had Fixed rate asset being funded by floating rate liabilities. Now, that's not the only type of mismatch. Okay? If we have long-term and short-term mismatch, we can also have issues. So let's say we've got a single asset, okay, 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 5% interest. So similar, uh, same asset as the previous example. But this time, the liability, let's say it's a six-month fixed rate note. Okay, So it's not floating. They're both, we've got a fixed rate asset and we've got a fixed rate liability. But the liability is in six months, it's going to mature, okay? So the bank is going to have to pay the money back. Um, and it's going to mature. Now, so 2% interest. So you say, okay, well, we got a 3% margin here. We got a 3% margin here. And there's nothing floating rate, so what's the problem? Well, here's the problem. In six months, when this matures, let's say interest rates go up. And then when it matures, the bank says, okay, well, this is now six months are up. Now we need to get another fixed rate note. But, oh, interest rates have gone up. And for us now to get a new fixed rate note, it would be, let's say, 2.4% interest. Okay, again, I'm not saying that this was a fixed rate note, but I'm saying after six months, the bank still needs funding because it's 30-year asset, but we had a six-month liability. So the bank has funded fixed rate assets so, or basically, excuse me, long-term assets, it is funded with short-term liabilities. Okay, we got a short-term liability and we got a long-term asset. Okay, so we got a mismatch there. And so when this liability matures after six months and we say, oh, okay, we got to issue another note. Oh, uh, the new rate is 2.4%. So now difference between 5 and 24 the new margin is 2.6%. Okay, so that's an asset liability mismatch occurring due to long-term assets being funded by short-term liabilities. So I, I hope you see how this could you know, lead to problems for the bank and shrink the margin. So again, the bank can enter into different things. Um, they can do interest rate swap, base of, basis swaps. We're going to talk about all those in the videos to come. Let me just hit the last example here. Different resetting frequencies. Okay, now, now let's say that you've got floating rate assets. So we've got an adjustable rate mortgage. That's a floating rate asset, 5% interest. And we've got a floating rate note. So the liability is floating rate. The asset is floating rate. So we have 3% margin, right? 5 minus 2. We got 3% margin. Now you say, hey, wait, what's the problem? The asset is floating rate. The liability is floating rate. So if interest rates go up, both the floating rates are going to go up. So when the margins stay the same, well, here's the issue. We have, and I've set it up where the asset, so the adjustable rate mortgage, okay, it resets quarterly okay whereas the liability the note resets monthly so this is going to reset 12 times a year okay and this is just going to reset four times a year so the liability is going to be resetting faster every single month 
So if interest rates go up, this thing's resetting every single month. It's going to reflect the higher interest rates faster than the adjustable rate mortgage. So the rate on the live, they're both going to go up, but the liability is going to go up faster every month. Okay, so that is going to shrink the interest margin and affect the net interest income of the bank. So this is the earning gap. The bank wants to try and minimize the earning gap. And you can even, and I'll show you later, I'll do an example. We can measure the sensitivity of the bank's net interest income to the interest gap. And when we do that, we'll measure the earning gap uh, as the difference between the bank's rate-sensitive assets and its rate-sensitive liabilities.